Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Paige Jarvie. I am your Global Marketing Assistant sitting in for Ms. Paula Feldman, uh, and I'd like to welcome you to today's presentation and webinar on brand protection and product traceability. Over the next hour, you will listen to findings of the report by author Donna Ritson with DDR Communications, where she will discuss what's new, or excuse me, what's now, what's new, and what's changing. Uh, president of DDR Communications, Donna, has founded the company 25 years ago. DDR's business is based on a direct response methodology that delivers market research, market, or excuse me, develop, business development, strategic alliance, and market in, marketing intelligence to companies in virtually every business-to-business -business industry. DDR's experience is backed by over 25 years in marketing communications. A few housekeeping notes before I hand it on over to Donna. Uh, everybody has entered the webinar muted. And if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the bottom left chat box. Um, and you will be able to type your questions in there, and we will go ahead and have those answered by Donna at the end of the presentation. Uh, the presentation will last about 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, and again, Donna will be able to answer any questions at the end. So at this time, I would like to hand the webinar over to Donna. Thank you so much, Paige. And thank you, everyone, for joining um, the PMMI webinar series today. Um, as Paige had indicated, this is a presentation on brand protection and product traceability. Um, we undertook this project a couple of months ago, and uh, one of the significant uh, outcomes of this uh, conversations that we had is that the war against fraudulent products is certainly going to be um, conquered if possible, but certainly fought in, with uh, technology. And if we look at Everything that's occurring in manufacturing today, integration and robotics, optics, data interpretation, these all play a very significant role in uh, marking and coding and tracking products throughout the entire supply chain. So that's what I'll focus on this morning is certainly what's happening with recalls, counterfeiting products, fraud, tampering that's going on, um, diversion, which is leading products into the gray market. And as Paige had indicated, is if you do have any questions as we go along, type them in and, and uh, we can discuss them at the end. So as we all look at the news, it's, it's significant. And I, I pulled this information from just a couple of weeks of news that was passing across my desk. And it's really um, amazing. It's, it's theft is occurring with cargo theft, recalls are absolutely significant and continuing to e increase. Um, if there's contamination or impurities in the products, it's causing recalls, mislabeling is causing recalls. And really, the FDA has come out and said that um, it's certainly one of the most challenging things that they're being faced with in the history of the FDA is really pro uh, providing the framework and the regulatory um, depth needed to really attack these problems. Um, so it's something that we're seeing every day in our news. We are the consumers of a lot of these products, so it's certainly affecting us both from a standpoint of professionally and from the standpoint of personally being the consumers that are um, involved in these recalls and the different problems that are happening in the marketplace. So this morning I'll really talk about um, three different sections. What impact does this have on our global economy? What advances are taking place in the technology to be able to track products through the entire supply chain? in which of those technologies will really endure and last, and which ones are emerging and being adopted. And then what equipment needs are behind this? What are companies still looking for? What help are they looking for from their suppliers? Certainly, as it, counterfeiting is becoming a, a worldwide epidemic, um, and it's really affecting uh, the production in foods and beverages and medicines. And tracking these products um, up the supply chain 
and then all the way through the supply chain is what this uh, research project um, undertook. So we'll look at that, that aspect completely. If we look first at how is this impacting the global economy, um, you would think that counterfeiting, when we think of counterfeiting or we think of fraud, it really was more in the um, personal products of handbags or shoes or different types of products that were easily counterfeited. But now it's really entering into um, producing fake foods and beverages and pharmaceuticals, even to the point where packaging looks authentic. There's um, coding and marking on the product, so it, it's really becoming much more difficult to determine uh, an authentic product from a counterfeit product. And it's 3 to 7% of the world trade is counterfeit products. And it's costing the economy $1.5 trillion um, in terms of the cost, which involves many different costs of um, um, absconding these products, um, getting rid of these products, regulating these products, monitoring these products, tracking the products, coding the products. It's, it's an enormous cost that's occurring, and it's growing at a rate three times, two to three times faster than food, beverage, or pharmaceutical markets are even growing. It's moving at a CAGR of 12 to 16 percent. And the reason there's such a big range there is because it's very difficult to get um, arms around this problem. Reporting from different ports is not always accurate. Sometimes it's not even occurring. So it, it's such a vast problem right now that um, it's very difficult for even experts predicting this to understand how big is the problem. And we are the greatest consumers of food and pharmaceuticals in the world. So 50% of the total growth in this market is really coming from North America. So we did study, as I've been saying, food, beverage, and pharmaceuticals. And since those markets are so completely different, um, let's just take a look here first at food and beverage and what's really happening um, in this market. And while it's really not um, intuitive to think of food and beverages being counterfeit or fraudulent, it really is um, a growing problem. 7% of um, the products in our grocery stores contain fraudulent ingredients. And it's a $10 to $15 billion industry in food fraud right now. And if you look at cargo theft, where is the majority of cargo theft coming? In fact, this was surprising finding this statistic. 24% of cargo theft is for food and beverages. And then, then after that, it's electronics and home and garden products, which certainly seem more uh, easy to counterfeit and then a whole host of other things that um, are attributed to cargo theft. But product recalls in this area, they're growing fourfold in the last four years. And as consumers, as I said earlier, we're seeing this significantly in our news, in our nightly news, the number of products that are being recalled. And 72% three out of four recalls are related to food ingredients. And the cost of food recalls, it, what it's costing a company if they have a recall, is $10 million, and that's probably low depending on the um, severity and the, the widespread uh, recall that could be occurring. And 58% of the companies that we spoke with had been affected by a recall and we recently gave this presentation at the PMMI annual meeting last week. And we asked the audience how many had been um, involved in a recall in terms of how many of their customers had either been involved in a recall or a victim of counterfeit or fraud. And it was over 90% of the audience that was listening in on this presentation. So the problem is, is certainly growing and escalating at an exponential rate. And if we look specifically now at pharma, um, which is a bit different in terms of 
how it's counterfeited and getting into the gray market. Um, but it's counterfeiting and diversion is rampant in this industry. 40% of the drugs that we take are imported. 80% of the active ingredients that we take in our drugs in this country come from an offshore location. And this widening supply chain is what's causing the problems in terms of opening the opportunities for um, the, the whole uh, counterfeit market. And it's certainly an, an opportunity for criminals to um, get into this market. And a lot of the uh, sale of fraudulent medicines coming from Africa and South Pacific, it's, it's at a tune of $5 billion dollars. And $75 billion revenue that's being derived from the counterfeit market. So the gray market is when it's an actual product that has been manufactured and it goes out into the supply chain. So, for instance, a pill could be manufactured in um, one country and then end up being shipped to uh, a second country. And then it could end up being... Um, packaged maybe in Mexico and then end up in our pharmacies here in the U.S. So it transfers many different hands. And that's where um, product can be diverted and moved out of the market and disappear into the gray market. And then oftentimes those drugs are sold at a much higher rate. But with the serialization occurring by the late uh, 2018, which is just two years from now, 75% of the world's prescription medications will be regulated and traveling through a supply chain that is regulated and tracked. So when we look at what's really driving some of this, certainly, as I'd mentioned already, the globalization um, is really creating an increasingly complex supply chain. The cold supply chain is growing. Um, we have regulations now, and I'm sure you're all familiar with FISMA and, that's driving the food and beverage towards more track and trace. I won't get into the details here, but PMMI did re release a report earlier this year specifically addressing FISMA and the, um, the changing regulations and what's in place now. And then certainly serialization, which is also a regulation that's growing in the pharma industry in the medical device industry with their unique device identification. Um, it will become more uniform. Um, tracking will become more um, uh, serialized, both for pharma and medical device. And there's a PMMI has a report right now being undertaken in the pharma industry that is getting into this subject much more specifically um, in terms of serialization and what as well and finding out where companies are at in the process. So if we take a look now at who participated in the research report that um, these findings are being presented for, we talked had 75 direct conversations and about 100 references and resources that are um, throughout this report that help substantiate um, the findings that we heard during our conversations. And we talked to the entire supply chain. We talked to suppliers of ingredients and materials and how are they tracking those um, products coming into a manufacturing plant. We talked to processing and packaging and transport as a product moves through the manufacturing process, how do they maintain that tracking integrity? And then when they ship it out to the warehouse and it goes to a retailer, what kind of coding and marking is taking place at each of those locations and where um, uh, some of the weak links are? And we talked to a very good representation. Obviously, larger companies um, was the bigger majority. They're leading the way in a lot of the regulations of FISMA and serialization, but also had a very good representation from medium-sized companies and small companies to find out what they're dealing with and what they're challenged with. And as I had said, we have talked, this was a, a report in food, beverage, and pharma. 
So if we look at the entire supply chain, it definitely requires checks and balances along the whole entire supply chain. So what companies are looking for is a fully integrated solution. It's got to have layers of um, uh, sophistication in terms of being able to track the product. It has to be fully integrated, so all of the marking, coding, printing, reading technologies all have to integrate into the manufacturing process. And it's got to be flexible to certainly adapt to different types of products, different types of materials, different sizes. And it's got to have a centralized system to track this information. That's certainly something that within their own organization is being tracked, but in a broader sense, tracking it through the entire supply chain so that at every stage, as the product transfers from one stage to the next, whoever takes ownership next of that product is able to continue on with the tracking um, pedigree of that product. In the event of a recall, that information has to be immediately retrievable. Um, there is no longer a grace period of you have a, a week to retrieve and recall that information. Everything must be immediately available to companies so that they can recall those products off the shelf as soon as any incident is, um, is discovered. And it was a bit surprising when we talked about um, how many companies are performing mock recalls to assure that their process is working and they can recall information in, uh, instantaneously. 92%, which I, I found that to be um, a very comforting high level of companies that do feel they are very prepared for this. Certainly, it's not 100% um, uh, in terms of all the uh, different stages of the supply chain. And we'll take a look at that here in the next slide. So in the um, full report, each one of these uh, sections or um, moving through the supply chain is looked at very carefully in terms of what are they using, how are they marking it, what types of marking are they using. But here I've given you just a bit of an um, overview um, otherwise, we'd be here on the phone for, for quite a long time to go through each stage of the supply chain. But as I said, that is in detail in the full report. So if we look at this um, in terms of there's two weak links that are occurring. And it's occurring when a product or an ingredient or a material or is moving into the manufacturing process. So being able to verify the authenticity of those ingredients, that there's been no contamination that's been occurring, um, that they're actually getting the product. This is something that the industry continues to work on. 1D barcodes are being used consistently throughout the entire supply chain. Um, but there's also 2D barcode is significantly growing. It can hold more information. It can um, move the product through with uh, a greater level of verification and authenticating a product. QR codes and smart labeling is certainly growing. Um, temperature sensors, as the cold chain uh, expands um, even in our own country but also offshore, temperature sensors are needed to make sure that those products are moving through and, and are staying at a consistent temperature. But if we look again at the end of the supply chain, so as products move out of the manufacturing process, then they have the, um, they're exposed again to having counterfeit fraud or even contamination entering into the process. So in the warehouse level, there's that um, link. Certainly the warehouse takes over with a lot of warehouse management systems. But communicating that information along the supply chain is the goal of the whole track and trace process. Um, in the warehouse and in the retail chain now, um, wearable scanning devices is certainly growing, and automated picking is growing to help um, eliminate some of the mistakes that could be made in terms of um, moving products through the supply chain as well. 
So it's, a, it's really a very complex subject to look at. I've tried to simplify it here, but as I said, there's definitely more detail in the full report. So if we look at um, talking about what types of uh, technology will be uh, prevail in the years ahead, certainly barcodes will continue to anchor this technology. Um, smart technology will continue to grow. In fact, our smartphones will be something that we will rely on even more. Um, certainly with QR codes, uh, we're able to um, authenticate a product, we're able to get more information on a product, and this would be with food and pharmaceuticals. So encrypted technologies will certainly um, be the leader in, in moving products through the supply chain for track and trace. 3D is emerging, which is really just a color-coded barcode or color-coded matrix of a 2D code. And we did hear about invisible barcode technology or even more uh, um, miniature uh, barcoding, certainly as clear packaging um, grows in popularity and clean labeling growing in terms of um, having less, uh, um, less ingredients in the product, but certainly more on a label. The need for smaller or invisible barcoding is, is a technology that we'll possibly see continue to grow. Smart labeling and tags is growing, particularly on perishable foods. Um, predicted in the next five years, that's going to grow at a, a pretty significant rate of 70% CAGR, very high growth. And the use of RFID, we, we studied um, RFID probably 20 years ago, and at that time it was predicted to grow significantly, and it never really took off. In the next 10 years, um, or in the past 10 years, it has found some niches in terms of um, being used for internal tracking assets, um, being used in the cold chain. Um, uh, ink now, the development of smart inks is growing and embedding uh, RFID with those smart ink with an antenna. So RFID will continue to grow, not certainly as fast. Um, it, in the next few years, it's predicted to grow at about 5%. Um, but we did hear that general use, um, both pharma, food, and beverage, all said that they predict it will have some kind of growth, but it's certainly not predicted to continue to grow at the rate that it, that it has been predicted in the past. So if we look at what is being um, used in terms of the type of marking systems, um, inkjet prevails. It's been around for a long time. Um, laser, though, we heard a significant amount of laser growing in this market just because of the um, technology that it offers. It certainly has the ability to um, be put on many different um, types of materials and thermal transfer as well. So if we look at which one will be more popular, that's a difficult prediction to make um, because it depends on the material, the product, where is it going, how far is it being tracked, what's the value of the product, how much tracking does it actually need. And certainly human readable codes will always be around. We as the consumers will need to know what the expiration date is, where was it manufactured, if there's any type of coding on that that identifies that product. If it were in a recall, we would need to be able to um, read that information. So human readable is certainly going to continue. And if we look at some of the new technologies, again, I mentioned our smartphones. They're, they're going to significantly um, play a role in some of these markings as we go forward. And so we did some research in terms of what new technology is out there, what um, innovation is occurring. And covert or invisible watermarks, while none of these technologies are being overwhelmingly adopted, um, they are out there for a product that has high value. 
and definitely needs to have more. Thank you. Please stand by.